Hey everyone, my name is James and I want to welcome you to uh, the first video tutorial from RenderBots on Cinema 4D. Um, this is quite a complex program when you first open it up. So I thought our first lesson would be showing you guys how the interface works. Uh, where, to find some, where to find some things that you um, probably won't normally look for them. So uh, I'll stop rambling and we're going to jump straight in. So here's Cinema 4D. This is what it looks like. So when we first open it up, you can see uh, we've got a few palettes up here. This first palette up here is known as the command palette. And inside here, we've got all our objects. Okay, inside here, this is our objects inside here. Uh, they're also known as kind of primitives. So if I click and hold down for a second, you can see inside here, I've got my cube, uh, a cone, a cylinder, and there are quite a few other bits and pieces here, which we're going to delve a lot more into later on. So again, I'm clicking and holding to get that menu up. Over here on the right hand side, uh, this is known as my object manager. So when I actually select uh, one of these cubes or a circle, it's going to appear inside this object menu. Underneath that, we have our attribute manager. So basically, when we get an object inside here, we can see all of the, the attributes to that object. Uh, displayed inside here. Next up we have the animation bar which is just down here. So we actually want to press play. We can see we've got 90 keyframes here. This stands for keyframes. So automatically set to zero. <clears throat> and as you can see we can drag this up and down. Uh, we can set keyframe points. Uh, but again, don't worry too much about this. We're going to go into all this. It's, it's no problem at all. Underneath here we then have the uh, material manager. So, um, you know, when you bring an object into cinema, it's going to be just like a beige sort of box, you know. And inside here, we're going to be able to find sort of textures and drop them on there and create our own as well. So, for example, if you wanted to do the beach, we could have like a sandy kind of color here and drag that and drop that onto the box. So we can have a look at that. Next up, we've got the command palette again down here. So this is kind of, um, you know, how we select that object we've got in the viewport. This knows our point tool, our line tool, and our polygon tool. Again, a lot of this, you know, if you hover over them, it's actually going to give you a brief description of this. So what I want to do is let's let's just jump in there and, and, and let's get a shape in there and see what we can do with it. So here we go. So this is our kind of our shape menu. Uh, then there's known as a, these are known as primitives. So uh, because they're basic shapes, things that most things are built from. So let's grab maybe a cube here. So all I did was click on that and a cube suddenly appeared inside my viewport here. So we're in the, um, the 3D view at the moment. And what I'm going to do is just show you uh, this little area here. If I give this a click, okay, cool. What that's going to do is it's going to show me my perspective view, uh, the top down view and the front view. And then over here, we've got the right view as well. So this is really important because when we start manipulating things in 3D, we need to know where this shape is in relation to maybe another shape over here. So if I give this button a click on this 3D port here, there you go, we're straight back in. So let's have a quick look at these because actually they're going to be really useful. And you guys are going to need to know how to you know, look around an object when you start building things. So this first one here is kind of what I call rotate around. So if I give it a click and hold, so I'm clicking and holding that button. You see it's highlighted in blue. It's going to enable me to go around this object, just like so. Okay, cool. Uh, this one's going to sort of bring me further away. So I'm clicking, holding, and dragging my mouse away. Clicking and holding and pushing in. Okay, and then straight back out again. So we've got the rotate, the pull camera uh, away, pull it in. Again, just clicking and holding the mouse and dragging them backwards and forwards. And then we've got the kind of the movement camera. This is going to leave the object where it is. And I can move uh, to the right, to the left, and then obviously you go up and below. You'll notice the cube is staying exactly where it is because we're looking through the sort of camera view. So all these are all about the camera view, what I'm actually viewing this object as. So as you can see, I love this one. Pull that little thing around as we look all the way around it and look underneath it as well. And again, just clicking and holding it on those little points to do so. So the idea is if you want to look down at the top down view, we can hit this little icon again and we're just going to see the top down view of that cube. Not very interesting uh, from here. What is interesting is, let's go back to the 3D view. Let's click and hold that around. Is what we've got is these um, 
these arrows, right? So we've got the green one here, we've got a blue one there, and a red one here. And this is where kind of 3D is really important. You've got to know what's going on with these arrows. So this red one here is going to pull the object on the X plane, right? So the X is kind of left to right. And then we have the Y plane, which is this, up and down. So X across, Y up and down. And then we finally kind of have the, what we call the Z axis. And this is push things away from us and bring things closer to us. So you'll notice as I hover over these arrows, it's actually going to light up so we can see what's going on. Okay, cool. So, you know, it's quite a good thing to remember. Maybe note that down. You know, we've got the X plane, uh, the Y up and down, and then the Z backwards and forwards. And when we move our camera around, you'll notice we're not changing the object. It's kind of still staying the, staying the same size. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to, um, we can see in our sort of object manager over here, we've got the cube. And this is obviously what we've just brought in. So I can now um, double click that cube and we can call it an object. So um, uh, let's just call this um, base. There you go. Type in base there. So double click it. It lets you rename it. Okay. Um, so obviously if I've locked these objects and I want to know what's going on. Uh, next up, let's click on the um, primitive sort of manager there and let's click maybe the sphere here. Now, as you can see, the sphere is showing inside our uh, object manager there. And uh, well, not even though we can see the, the cube, the circle's kind of, you see that little outline there? It's actually still there. So because it's highlighted in orange here, it's going to let me sort of drag that out at the Z axis there. Look, there you go. So we can now see that. So now I can sort of move the viewport. But as you can see, what's happening is I'm still kind of rotating around the square, which is a little bit annoying. So as a quick key, as a little bit of gold dust for you guys, uh, we've got a little shortcut. And this is because the sphere is highlighted. If I press the S, S will frame that object. See how simple that was? So now I'm going to be sort of near enough rotating around that sphere there. If I want to go back over to the base here, give it a click, press the S key, and you'll notice I jump straight there again. So a really good quick tip there to you know jump between objects and, and get them centers. That's just the S key, as you can see there. Again, these are kind of things that I wish somebody would have showed me when I first started using cinema. Um, it's, it's kind of what I call the essentials. It's really good to know all this stuff. So here we have these two objects. And we can have interlacing, bring them close together, and we can sort of drag them up a bit closer there and maybe drag it in there. It doesn't really matter what we're going to do. But just to give you guys an idea how this interface works. So you see as I'm grabbing, I'm trying to look from all these angles. And this is why we kind of have this here, because what this does is it kind of shows us maybe from the right-hand view what that's going to look like. Look, you can see I can jump inside here. Let's see what that's going to look like. There you go. And then we've got this front one here. So we can again, we can just maximize it using this button, drag that in. And as you see now, we can use these little arrows to kind of get that right where we need it. Okay, really good for sort of alignment. This is why, again, it's, it's showing me the camera is in the front view. Click on that button again. Takes us back to 3D view. Uh, I've got to say, this is, I love this view. It's perfect. <laughs> it's just what I need uh, to look around a model. Okay, so with that done, uh, I'm going gonna, gonna to see what this is going to look like. So this is called actually rendering. Okay, so the render button for this is located just here. This is my render button. Okay, give it a click. And boom, there you go. It's, we've lost that 3D kind of background. We can now see we've got this sort of shape here. And it's a lot nicer. And as you see, it's defaulted this like gray base. So what I'm going to do is it's going to show you guys, once I start moving the viewport, by the way, you can start to see that it becomes unrendered, right? So it's now just another object for me to look around. Click on here, it renders really quickly. So what we're going to see is how can we kind of uh, create a material and drop it on there. So the material, as I said before, is going to be down in here in the material manager. And all I've got to do is create new material. And straight away, it gives me this sort of um, beige sphere. And obviously, I, if I want to beige, all I've got to do is click and drag it onto the object. See the plus button there? It's going to be on the sphere or on the base. Let's put it on the base, on the sphere. There you go. Again, I hit the render window. It's now rendered that object. So fairly simple. We can see we've got a bit of sort of spillage here from where the sphere's knocking the side of the uh, square. 
So and over it, it's kind of in my object manager as well, you can see the sphere now has that gray palette on there. So if I tr click and hold and drag that to the base, boom, as you can see, there's the base. Give it another sort of render view. And you can see that material's now moved over. So uh, let's drop it back on the sphere. So click and hold. So you see these materials, we can, um, you know, click and drag and maybe drop another one on the base there. There you go. Give another render and you see that's going to work for us there. Very simply, if we don't want a material on here, just press the delete key and off it goes. So let's make this um, this base material. See, it's called matte here. If I give it a double click, I'm going to be able to sort of rename that as well. So let's just call this uh, James. So it's my own material I'm creating. I'm going to, and basically what I'm going to do now is double click that. Whoa, what is this? Well, this is called the material editor. And as you can see, it's showing me the color that's actually, um, it's the default, right? And in here, we've got these whole bunch of checkboxes. And again, I wish somebody would have gone through this with me when I first had it, but basically reflection, look at this. Wow, cool, right? So this basically makes that sort of gray massively reflective. And I kind of, I'm losing the gray texture already. What is, so if I move this pointer down, this brightness here, you start to see as I move it down, yeah, that's cool, right? It's adding more reflectiveness to it. And again, we just got the reflection highlighted there. We can move that up and down. And if I'm happy with that, I can just go, yeah, that's cool. Okay, now because that material has already been assigned to the sphere, if I press the render button here, it's actually now reflected. But of course, there's nothing in the outside world for this to reflect in. There's, there's nothing which is a bit of a problem. We've got nothing kind of around here for to see a reflection. And so what we're going to do, let's click on the primitive and let's get maybe this little figure here. Hey, there he is. Let's put him over here. Now, as you can see, I just sort of moved that from this point to this point here. It doesn't really matter. I'm just using these little arrows. I can actually pick him up and move him wherever I want. But if I want them to stay on a particular axis, I'm going to just use those arrows every time. Uh, this little button here, is the scale tool and as you see it comes up with a little shortcut number t there so if i give it a click i can grab any one of these little points here and it's gonna um yeah make the object a lot smaller right so there he is i've used the scale tool to make it bigger or smaller just by grabbing those little handles there go back to my sort of point select here and i'm gonna be able to sort of move that here let's have a little look let's put him there Okay, now let's little, hit our little render button again. Okay, so we're sitting right in front of there. So we're going to move our viewport around and have a little look and see what that looks like. Okay, some still no reflection, huh? In fact, there you go. You can just see it there. See that, guys? Let's uh, get a little closer. There you go. There's a little outline of our fella. So we see the material is already reflecting what's in front of that. Okay, nice and simple. So what we'll look at now is, is kind of, because this is a little bit boring as it is, it's not very 3D-ish, is it? It's not very cool. So what I'm going to do is let's click on a little figure here. Let's move them up a little bit higher. Let's click on our, um, our primitives and go to a plane. And as you see, the plane suddenly appeared. Um, my object manager is showing me that plane as well. If I drag this arrow down like so... And what I'm going to do is, uh, let's drag and move it over here like this. Okay, let's hit render again. As you see, I love to press this button, just see how it's going. Um, I'm actually using a, a MacBook Pro here. This is the 2013 model. Uh, there you go, okay, cool. So what I want to do is add a reflection now onto the floor, or maybe, uh, I'll tell you what, what we'll do. Let's, let's create a light. Okay, let's have a look at light, because this is just a really kind of quick introduction to cinema and where everything is that you're going to sort of want to play with straight away. It's kind of like my toolbox. So let's click on this light. Okay, cool. Now, the minute we brought a light in, suddenly we start to see kind of uh, real world lighting. In other words, at the moment before what we was looking at was, you know, a fully lit world. But the minute we introduced a little light, so we just press this little icon on here and a little light appeared. Okay, so the minute we clicked on there, the light went into my sort of object manager. And as I now drag the light, you'll see actually, whoa, okay. We drag that light and we'll go upwards with that light. There we go. And we see now it's actually you know, really sort of interacting with my whole little 3D scene here. So let's hit my render button. 
Cool, there you go. So you can see it's kind of lit up from there. We can't really see the top of the cube anymore because we've kind of rendered that off. Let's have a look back in my sphere. And now you can really start to see the reflections inside here from the material we made previously. So let's come back. So real lights kind of, you know, they cast shadows, right? So remember we said down here we had the attribute manager. Well, the minute I clicked on the light button here, all the way down here, we saw the word type of light, omnidirectional, and it's a shadow, and the shadow is set to none. So what we're gonna do is click on the word none, and we'll see the word um, shadow maps soft. So I kind of love this effect. I kind of put it in pretty much all my projects. So we're gonna click on uh, shadow maps soft. Again, nothing visible going on in here. We can't see uh, what that's done, how it's changed, what we're looking at here but if I press this button here now boom look at that yeah that's what we're talking about proper real world shadows so as I move this around as you can see we can't really see straight away we've got to render this out so we've got to press a little render button here and now we see the shadows now falling away uh, from that object okay really really good um, obviously what's also great about um, lights is that you know we can change the color of all these so the color of light at the moment is set to white i'm just going to give that a little click and straight away we bring up our sort of attribute little color what we call the color picker here so we can move this so let's keep it like a oh let's give it a horrid a <laughs> light blue there there you go just press ok and straight away we can see that interacting with our project we're going to hit the render button again Okay, cool. And as you can see where the light is, it really is pushing that shadow uh, beautifully on the If I click on the, uh, click on the figure, drag that one out. Let's drag it over here. Kick render again. So isn't that great? Just brilliant. I remember um, using this for the first time and just thinking, wow, there's going to be so much going to be able to do with this. Um, just playing with these primitive shapes, you know, click and hold. Look at that. Really, really nice. In fact, you know, uh, it looks kind of abstract -y, but we're going to, so look at my little uh, project man, you can see the reflection there. Uh, this could be some sort of astronaut's um, <laughs> helmet and looking at the little fellow over here. So this is uh, really, really quite cool. And I just love, again, using these curves, getting really familiar, clicking the holding on those and having a look around that whole thing. Okay, so uh, I'm going to wrap that up for now. Because um, that's a lot to take in. Yeah, we just had a quick basic look at kind of moving around the interface, um, giving these things some actually words inside here. So this is our command palette, as I said. This is kind of our, where our objects, our, pr our primitives are kept. This is my object manager. This is my attributes manager. And this is my materials. So we're gonna come and have a look back at kind of all this again. But what I need from you guys is uh, some feedback, right? Let's see how, um, you got on with that. Um, share your stuff with me, uh, james at renderbots.co.uk. Um, you can also follow me on Twitter at uh, render underscore bots. Uh, that's me on Twitter. So get in touch. Uh, tell me how you got on with that. And I'd love to see some projects. Until next time, I'll see you soon. Bye.